Today, we're only reading the first and last, okay? The first and last in the Throne of Glass series. Since I mentioned this in my May TBR video, The Backlash, <laughs> I'm already confused and I haven't even opened the book yet. Who are these people? Where the f did Jay come from? Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Do you know how many people have told me not to do this? Do you know how many times I've had a comment saying, Gavin, just don't do this. Like, what are you playing at? Since I mentioned this in my May TBR video, the backlash. <laughs> I can imagine I will probably regret doing this and I most likely will be confused for the second half of this vlog. But it's an idea that I've really wanted to do and try. I have been watching a YouTuber called Dylan is in Trouble and I really do love his videos. I've been watching him for years. He's a reactor and he reacts to different things and he does a series on his YouTube channel called First and Last where he only watches the first and last episodes of a TV show he's never seen before. And I just love that, I love that. So I thought, why don't we apply that to books? Let's do it to a series that I haven't read yet and let's do it to a series series that I've been meaning to read for, oh my god, so long. And that series is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. Yeah, this has been on my TBR since 2014. I believe it came out before that though. And I just feel like if I don't read it now, I might never ever read the series. I do have them all. As I said, I will only be reading the first and the last book in this series. And I was thinking, should I do a vlog reading all of the Throne of Glass books? Like I've been doing with my kind of complete series vlogs. But then I thought, what's the point? Aaron from Booked and Busy has literally the definitive reading all Throne of Glass books vlog. Honestly, it's an incredible vlog. So if you want something like that, I will link Aaron's video down below. Today, we're only reading the first and last, okay? The first and last in the Throne of Glass series. This will also really help with my final book support group, a kind of challenge, <laughs> because the final book support group helps you to get to like the end of a series. So let's get me to the end of the series. Let's cut the middleman and just go from the first to the last. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I think Thorn of Glass is a series that everybody knows already from Booktube and have most likely already read. If you're watching this now, you've most likely read the series. I do want to say that this will be spoiler filled. This will be spoiler filled because I feel like it will be hard to talk about the books in detail if I don't do spoilers and also to convey my confusion when I read the final book. Like, oh my God, who is this character? I've never met them before. And why did that person die? I have no idea who they are. Who is this love interest? I've never met this love interest before, things like that. So if you haven't read Throne of Glass or Kingdom of Ash, then maybe wait until you do and come back and watch this video. But before you leave, don't forget to give this video a like. So I probably don't need to tell you what this series is about, however I will. So Throne of Glass follows an 18 year old girl who is imprisoned. She is a trained assassin, but she got caught, she made a mistake. Can you tell I'm just reading the back? A captain called Captain Westfall gives Selena, who is the trained assassin, a lifeline. If she represents the prince in a kind of battle to the death tournament, then she will secure her freedom. I believe I got like 40 pages into it back in 2014, just before I started uni. And I was like, oh, I'll come back to this once, you know, I'm done with uni and once I've read the stuff. And I never did. So eight years later, we are coming full circle. So stick around if you want to see my thoughts on Throne of Glass and Kingdom of Ash. I'm going to try and make some predictions after reading Throne of Glass and before reading Kingdom of Ash. <laughs> see if I'm right about anything. Probably not. I have read Sarah J Mass's other stuff. I have read the Court of Thorns and Roses series and I have read House of Earth and Blood as well. I don't know if my familiarity, familiar, familiar, Familiarity? Familiar... I've never had to say that word out loud. Familiarity. 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 I don't know if my familiarity with Sarah J Mass's later works will help me in my predictions and what's going to come in Kingdom of Ash because this is Sarah J Mass's debut YA series. So she's probably grown a lot as a writer since this and I'm just going to have to go into it trusting my own instincts. <laughs> yeah, I'm most likely going to be wrong about everything. Now let's go. Let's throw in a go. This is all the alcohol that... <laughs> Three bottles of Prosecco for my birthday. My friends know me too well. <laughs> I think I'm gonna crack one of those open tomorrow when I read Kingdom of Ash because I'm gonna fly through Throne of Glass tonight, I think. And I'm gonna need a drink while reading the final book, I think, because like I will not know what's going on. So I feel like it would be a lot more you know, beneficial for me if I'm drinking. So I've read the first 100 pages of Throne of Glass and I'm not minding it, you know? I actually do think it's pretty decent so far. It has a pretty good story. I am liking Selena, although of course she has to absolutely love books. 
Like every single YA protagonist has to love books. Other than that, I do sense a bit of a love triangle between Selena, uh, Prince Dorian, and Kaol, who is like the soldier god person. One thing I do quite like about this book is how it starts because it does put you straight into it. It gets straight into the story. And we have Kaol, 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 take Selena straight from this prison where she's been. I would have enjoyed seeing more from the prison. I don't know if that Assassin's Blade book, which I think is like a prequel, delves more into that. It might do, it probably does. But I kind of wish I could see more of that prison setting because I feel like it would have been more interesting to have at least seen her struggle a bit there. But anyway, yeah, she's gone to live like a royal now. She's gone from being imprisoned and is going to be in prison for life to living like a royal because she's going to be the king's official assassin. But she needs to get through like this tournament thing first. And she's met the other competitors. Yeah, I think she just needs to do a lot of endurance stuff because the minute people are underestimating her because apparently because she is using a, a pseudonym called Lillian. And I'm pretty sure Alison from Pretty Little Liars used the same alias. Nothing's coming up on Google. But it just made me think Pretty Little Liars. Anyway, I do kind of like stories with the competition contest element added to it. Kind of like the second Doctor Shade of Magic book and the Nevermore series, like Amari and the Night Brothers. You know, things like that. I do love things with a little bit of a competitive edge. So I'm interested to see what happens. I have literally just watched Squid Game as well the past day, which has another kind of contest, if you will. So really into that kind of trope at the minute. So I do think I'm going to end up liking this. I do really like YA. It's weird as well because I know I feel like I've grown out of it a little bit, but I do still really like the stories that are told in YA. And I know this is a bit old now, but I did just read a book called Twin Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. And that was really good. That's YA. And I feel like this book as well as Twin Crowns is making me want to read more YA at the minute, which I know I've been neglecting, but I'm going to continue reading. It's quite late. It is quite late now. I did end up watching the first episode of All of Us Are Dead on Netflix and I'm really wanting to watch the second episode <laughs> but it's an hour long so I really should continue reading because I got stuff to do and I can't keep procrastinating. Well Colour may intrigued. Nobody told me this was a murder mystery. I mean I have a track record of solving murder mysteries but I'm a little bit clueless on this one so actually it turns out that one of the champions ends up getting murdered like really brutally and horribly and we just don't know who it is. How come I've never heard of this plot point from the Throne of Glass book? It definitely makes this whole training thing a bit more interesting. The first one was archery which of course Selena was amazing at. So it'll be interesting to see what the second one is. I'm sure she'll do very very well. I like the fact that she has to like try and rein herself back a bit so that the others don't really notice her and don't see her as too much of a threat. I do kind of like that. I'm also interested to see where this love triangle will go as well. Because at the minute, she's kind of a little bit... Well, I mean, Kaol, he is being a little bit difficult at the minute. Because Selena was, like, sparring with the princess, but, like, in a friendly way. Like, they're becoming friends. And Kaol is like, what are you doing that for? And the prince was also a little bit reluctant, but he does end up kind of having a little bit sword play with her. But anyway, I digress. I'm liking it so far. I took a little bit of a pause because Ali started streaming on Twitch and I just wanted a little break even though it's nearly 1am and I still have so much of the book to get through and I wanted to have it finished by now <laughs> and I ain't think I'm like 150 pages in now. Gosh this room is so yellow I mean it is because of the fairy lights but it just looks so yellow. <laughs> I read another 100 pages of Throne of Glass. I mean no new thoughts really however there is a king called Gavin there was a king called Gavin, and I'm just like, my name is barely ever used in things. And we have a Gavin in the Throne of Glass series. We actually, wasn't there someone called Gavin in something recently, and he turned out to be a murderer? Oh, Camp Slaughter. No, he didn't turn out to be a murderer, he turned out to be a twat. So yeah, no new thoughts really. Another champion's died, so it's literally like Hunger Games. It's literally Hunger Games. They're killing them off one by one until there's one person left. I was been maybe going to bed. Nah, I'll read another 100 pages. It's too late for me to try and finish this tonight, so I'll have to continue in the morning. 
I can try and get up a little bit early. It's not even 2am yet. So I'll see if I can read another 100 pages and then we'll reconvene in the morn. We'll reconvene on the morrow. I've finished throwing a glass and I quite liked it. I quite liked it. It wasn't too bad. Seeing that, probably like 3.5, 3.5 stars. When I think about the entire plot overall, it wasn't really like anything too special. However, I need to remember that it's the 10 year anniversary of this book this year. So when I think about books that came out in 2012, it probably did fit in around that time. It was probably a little bit more original then than it is now, of course, because, you know, I've read so much in the past 10 years that there have been books that have done kind of this concept a bit differently, probably a bit better. So yeah, I'm looking at this as in, it's the 10 year anniversary. It's been out for 10 years. I did quite like the end. It actually made for what I'm sure is quite a few exciting sequels that I will not be reading. <laughs> at least not in this vlog. After finishing Kingdom of Ash, I might try and read them after. <laughs> Remember guys, this is just an experiment, okay? This is just an experiment. The whole plot about the competitors getting killed and things was because there was this like creature coming from a portal that's in the castle and it was Kane who was bringing them through. And I don't even think I've mentioned Kane. In fact, I don't think I've mentioned very many characters at all other than like the main three. Because like, say in terms of Kane, he was sort of like the villain of the book, but he was a little bit just like an arrogant asshole really. There wasn't really like anything too, I mean, villainous. Yeah, he tries to kill people and he does kill people, but he's just so bland of a villain, especially after what comes later, you know? I've read Akatar, I've read Crescent City, and there are better villains, so I'm gonna give it some leeway in that front, because, yeah, it was just a little bit obvious that Kane would be behind the killings, even though I didn't say that earlier, it was obvious, okay? But it did make it quite exciting for Selena when she is fighting Kane later on, I did think that was quite good because she drank the poison, like she, her, like her drink had been spiked. So I wasn't really too sure how Selena would get out of that. Of course she did get out of it. Like I had no fear whatsoever that she would do well and end up becoming the King's official assassin. And I do love the very last moments when she is siding away kind of her as a person to the King so that she can, well, become his assassin, but also to get her freedom in the long run. Even though she hates the king, like, she really wants to kill the king. And, like, who wouldn't? He's an absolute twat. And it was also interesting to note as well, I didn't mention this before either. Honestly, this is all over the place. But magic has kind of, like, been banished from the realm. But there are some people with magic. However, Princess Nehemia is the one who ends up saving her with magic. So, I mean, that's fine. It was a little bit... It's a two-sex machina where kind of like saved at the last minute almost. And it was a little bit convenient. I'm not gonna go into that. <laughs> it was fine. I wasn't sure how else she would be able to get out of that situation. I thought maybe she could have maybe tried to find a weakness of Kane during that fight and take him down herself so that she claims her power for her own and like she proves that she is a really deadly assassin. Because, you know, we get this sense that she is this famed and feared assassin. But I don't think this book shows that at all. Like, Selena isn't really that scary. And she is good. She's good at what she does. But when it comes to actually, like, fighting and stuff, like, she doesn't do all that great. I mean, I know she was, like, spiked and stuff, but surely she could have used her brain to overcome Kane instead of somebody else saving her. I don't know. The triangle between... Dorian and Kale and Selena. I am going to make some predictions about that love triangle in a second, actually. That love triangle thing was fine. Usually I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I think it was done pretty okay in this. Like, I'm not, I don't hate it. No, this was absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. 3.5. So, Kingdom of Ash, the final book in the series. I'm not reading any of the other ones, even though I have them all. I'm not reading any of them in this vlog. I'm going to go straight into this one. Who the fuck is Aelin? I'm gonna read the summary on the back, but who is Aelin? Is Selena Aelin? I'm already confused. <laughs> Aelin Galathinius has risked everything to save her people, but at a tremendous cost. Locked in an iron coffin by the Queen of the Fae, Aelin must use all her fiery will to endure the torture inflicted upon her. If she yields to Maeve, she will doom everyone she loves, but her resolve is beginning to unravel. With Aelin imprisoned, her friends must go on without her. Some bonds will deepen, while others will be severed forever. But as destinies weave together at last, all must unite as Aelin fights to save herself and the promise of a better world. Who's Aelin? <laughs> okay, is Aelin the, like, original name for Selena? Is this who Selena becomes after the four years with the king is up? 
Who the fuck is Aelin? Queen of the Fae? We haven't been introduced to any Fae yet, I don't think. This is starting to sound more like Hawthorns and Roses, not gonna lie. Is there not like a, this is what you missed on Glee? Kind of thing at the start of this? Like just to bring me up to speed? <laughs> Prediction wise, literally none of what happened to this is even mentioned on here. Like there's nothing about the King. There's nothing about Selena. There's nothing about Kaol or Dorian. What in the world? The final battle is here. Okay. And why does this have to be 984 pages long? 984 pages. It's nearly a thousand. It also says contains mature content, not suitable for younger readers. Pretty sure that's what Akamath said too. I will be opening up some Prosecco later when I do some sprints for Steph. I think I'm gonna give the first few chapters a read, come back to you guys, let you know how confused I am. <laughs> And then when I do the sprints with Steph later, I'll crack open the Prosecco and read the rest of this because I'm already confused and I haven't even opened the book yet. Oh, another prediction, I think magic is like back. Oh, you know what? I'm not even gonna make predictions. I'm not even gonna make any more predictions because I just feel like it's a totally different book to the first one. <laughs> so I've read the first kind of bit. There's two chapters before part one. There's a chapter called The Prince and a chapter called The Princess. Is the, because pr it's just speaking in like, well, third person, so their names aren't actually like used. So is the prince, Prince Dorian from the first book? And is the princess Selena? Like did she marry the prince in one of the books? And he's talking about trying to find her because she is locked in a, a iron coffin. And then in the chapter called the princess, there is somebody who is locked and an iron coffin, and they've been trapped there. And is is that Selena? Like, did she marry the prince? She's been trapped, and that's why on the back there's a character called Aelin because she's the new main character. I genuinely really have no idea. I mean, you're probably watching this, haven't already read all of the books, thinking, good grief, uh, you couldn't be more wrong. I don't know though, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure it is Selena because it seems like this person has been a princess for a while and in the first book, Selena is not a princess. I mean, I'm only nine pages in. So I've only got like 990 more to go. <laughs> Maybe there's some kind of like recap in the first chapter. I'll give that a read and see if that helps any for me learning like what the fuck's going on and who these people are. Who's Ren? Who's Aiden? Who's Lysandra? Who is anyone? <laughs> Who are these people? Oh, I know a character. Okay, Dorian. Dorian's been mentioned. It seems like they're gearing up for some kind of war or like some kind of battle. All hope of preventing that horrible fate now lie with Dorian, Haviliard, and Manon Blackbeak. I don't know this Manon person. I would know me from Adam. I'm sure he's lovely. Where they'd gone these months, what had befallen them, Aiden hadn't heard a whisper, which he supposed was a good... Wait, hang on. Okay, Aiden. Okay, where they'd gone these months, what had befallen them, Aiden hadn't heard, oh, is it Aideon? Aideon? Aideon hadn't heard a whisper, which he supposed was a good sign their survival lay in secrecy. So is he the prince at the very start who's trying to look for this princess? Is he? Okay, there are mentions of witches. So I'm assuming that magic, which was kind of like banned in the first book, is more prevalent now. Even though like people did use magic in the first book, it was like very hush hush. Seems like maybe magic is back. So, I mean, I know this is like a really stupid idea. Honestly, I know it is. But what I want from a final book in a series is that it does like nod to the first book, like things that are set up in the first book, the foundations that are laid in the first book will be still, you know, seen in the final book. Now I do like series, TV show series, book series, film series, where it's kind of like a full circle kind of thing where, you know, I fell in love with maybe the first film or the first episode of a TV show and or the first book and I could still feel that in the final episode film book. I'm not feeling anything from this book so far. I've got one character name and that's it. To be fair I am 16 pages in. So even though this is a stupid idea just jumping from the first book to the last book I want to see. I want to see just how much the final book is like the first book and if the series continued the kind of foundation that thrown a glass set. You know what I mean? I know what I mean in my head. Who's Killian? Who's Ren? 
Oh, wait, hang on. So is it Aelin who's the princess in the box? But hang on, it's saying that she's a queen. Oh, oh my God. It's literally got on the freaking back of the book locked in an iron coffin. By the queen of the fate. Oh my God. Well, I can't read. So Aelin is the princess. Okay. Okay. It literally said it on the back of the bloody book as well. This is what happens. When I get too confused, I confuse everything. <laughs> oh! Kaol. Kaol's be mentioned. Apparently there was some kind of opium den in Riftfold. Ren had known the owner. I don't know if this means anything to you guys. It doesn't mean anything to me. But Ren knew the owner of the opium den and had frequented the woman's establishment plenty before the night. Aiden, Adion, and Kaol had hold in a nearly unconscious rent to hide from the king's men. Okay. So we've had a mention of Keol and a mention of Dorian, but still no mention of Selena. Oh my God, how long is this chapter? I still don't know what the fuck's going on. Okay, four pages, four pages left. There's mention of a dark king now as well. I'm assuming he's the enemy. It's from Killian, A. Dion said hoarsely. Morath's troops made landfall of the course at Eldris. And then Ren said, he destroyed the city, turned it to rubble without unleashing a single troop. Wait, hang on. It's saying that alien. What? Hang on. I'm so lost. Right. So I've read the first chapter. I'm 25 pages in. I've got a mountain to climb. Part of me's tended to read summaries for the last five or six books before this one. But I'm just like, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. That'll get rid of all the fun. <laughs> this is how much I've read. And this is all I've got to go. This is me being confused for another 900 pages. Ugh. I'm going to have to get some Chinese food as well. I think today I'm going to ha open the bottle of Prosecco when I continue reading this, order some Chinese food and live my best confused life. Right. Hang the fuck on, Bridget. So the prince at the start who's looking for Aelin in the coffin is Rowan. I think... <laughs> <laughs> Got the audiobook on as well because I need both for me to really fully concentrate on this book and figure out the threads of what's going on. Uh, but Rowan, I I'm sure it's Rowan who is the prince who was at the start. You know, all of this confusion could have been avoided if their names had just been used in those chapters. However, I feel like also a lot of that confusion would have been eliminated if I'd read the previous six books or five books or however long it is. So yeah, I'm just trucking along really. I'm about to sprint with Steph. I will open the Prosecco probably during the sprints. Uh, so stay tuned because I will most likely just keep popping in randomly to update you on Kingdom of Ash because again, I don't know what's going on. Right, lads. I think I'm gonna go for the, this Prosecco. This is the one that Jade got me for my birthday. I know I have like three other options. This is like rosé though. And I'm kind of fancying a bit rosé to be honest. It says Casa Santa Sola. Uh, what kind of like flavour does it seem like what flavour it is? Um, it is extra dry rosé, delicate pink colour, floral and fruity fragrance with a freshy savoury and elegant taste that makes the product perfect for an aperitif or to accompany light dishes and shellfish. I mean I'm having none of that. <laughs> I'm not having shellfish or anything which I do enjoy to be fair. But uh, yeah, I've got like 10 minutes before the sprints for Steph, so I'd better step my pussy up. My sister got me a wine glass that says 30 and totally gorgeous. So I'm gonna break into this. Damn, where is the catch? Oh, hang on, I think, I think I found it. I mean, I'm on chapter six now with throwing up glass and again, though I'm still absolutely bloody confused. Has Selena died? Has Selena died? Because there's no mention of her at all. And I have still no idea who Rowan and Aelin and all of those people are. Okay, brace yourself, brace yourself. Hey, oh, look at all that smoke. Well, it's not really smoke, but... Yeah, so, I mean, ignore the dishes in the sink. <laughs> I'm just gonna pour me some of this and take the bottle in with me. Or I might keep it in the fridge, actually, to keep it cold. I will, yeah, I'll do that. I'll keep it in the fridge to keep it cold. And I think you put, like, a spoon in it for some reason as well. I've seen people do that before. I think it's to keep the fizz or something. That's in there. It's because I've got too much Prosecco. <laughs> it's keeping the fridge from closing. There we go. <laughs> okay, cheers. Mm, that's really nice. That is actually really, really nice. Guys, Kale has a wife? And she's, and she's called Irene? 
where the fuck did Jay come from? I thought Kaol and Selena had a little summer summer going on. What? Wait, wait, hang on. Is Aileen, is Aileen Selena? Because Irene just said, Irene just said, where, where, what did she say again? Inside a still bore the note Aileen had left her years ago when his wife worked as a barmaid in a backwater port and the queen lived as an assassin under another name. Well, Selena was an assassin. So the queen lived as an assassin under another name. So Aileen, wait, no, hang on. Aileen is a princess because it said she was a princess. I'm so confused. His wife worked as a barmaid, which is Irene, and a backward port, and the queen lived as an assassin under another name. So is she a queen of the fae? So has Aelin been trapped by the queen of the fae, which is Selina? Is Selina the queen of the fae? I'm, why? I'm not getting this. <laughs> I bet you I'm so wrong, but I'm not getting this at all. I mean, I might be right as well. Who knows? Right? Back in I go. There is also talk of a 13. It's like, the 13... No. What is the 13? So it's talking about Manon. He was not her king, which is talking about this like spider shapeshifting witch. He was not her king. He was not the coven leader of the 13. But this has been mentioned a couple of times. The 13 had gone equally. So are the 13 the band of characters, the main characters that we're following right now? Did they become a, a coven called the 13? to fight back against like these evil forces they were looking for some witches before the the kraken witches the croc crockery witches the something witches they were looking for this like the something witches also i'm loving that gavin is back in this as well the king the king from years and years and years and years and years ago who like has died and stuff but like he is like helping them as a spirit i like this gavin it's not often i read a book with a good gavin character in fact it's never i wonder if sarah J. Mass named him after me so Dorian is king now as well. What happened to the old king? The king that Selena was trying to kill because he like ruined her family. What happened there? Honestly, it's like going from the first season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills to the last, this book. Is it too much to ask for just a little bit of explanation, a little bit of context? Just popping in briefly to say that I'm still confused. I'm like 250 pages in. But um, one thing I'm not confused about is Sarah J. Mass's favourite phrase is ghost of a smile. I was about to say something about it when I was talking about Throne of Class because it came up quite a few times the ghost of a smile appeared on their face. And I didn't say anything because I was just like, okay. But then I have just read a part where ghost of a smile was mentioned again. This book is very, very different to Throne of Glass. However... A ghost of a smile is pretty much the only thing that is similar. And that's all I have to say right now. This ain't why anymore. They've just had sex. What? I thought this was why it. I know I said it contains mature content not suitable for younger readers on the back. I mean, the bits aren't mentioned. The bits are not mentioned during this. And I should probably say I'm like 350 pages in now. So I've still got a long way to go. I... Ended up watching a couple of episodes of All of Us Are Dead this morning. It's still quite early, so I've still got like quite a lot to go through. I My voice sounds a bit rough at the minute. I think because I drank a whole bottle of rosé last night, I kind of feel a little bit rough. It's fine. It's fine. But I don't think my throat feels as rough as my brain, essentially. Because I'm so confused, I thought this was by ear. <laughs> but they're talking about going harder and faster and like he's inside it. Oh my God. Anyway, oh, I should probably say I'm talking about Aelin and Rowan. I'm talking about Aelin and Rowan. And you know what? I kind of like them together. Am I supposed to? I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to think. I don't know if I'm supposed to like a character. Have they done something in the past to make people not like them? I don't know. But they seem fine together. <laughs> Again, I'm liking the story enough. I think it was the Crocken Witches now. Like, is that what they're called? I think they're the enemy, <laughs> I think. 350 pages in and I don't know who the enemy is. God, I could be so wrong. There was like a a dark queen as well, but I don't really know too much about her. Uh, yeah, I need to wake up a little bit more. I'll make myself a coffee and continue reading slash listening because I cannot just read without the audiobook and I cannot just audiobook without the reading physically. I need both. How the fuck am I still on part one? Kale's becoming a dad? 
Aw, that's so sweet. Dorian's turning into a woman? I'm gonna get ready because I'm supposed to be going for some food with my dad, my brother and sister in like an hour. So I'm gonna listen to some more of the audiobook and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get ready and get myself looking all beautiful and refreshed. I need to change things up because I feel like all I've done for the past couple of days is read Kingdom of Ash. And it would be nice to do something else. I mean, I've also watched like some of All of Us Are Dead as well, of course. I need to go out and do stuff. <laughs> I finally finished part one. Finally. I've still got like 350 pages to go. Oh, guys, guys, guys. Maybe this wasn't the best idea for my first ever, first to last kind of series. I don't know if I'll do this again, to be honest. But like, it's just so unrecognisable from the first book. So let's, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to look up spoilers. Like, oh my God, this is like my worst nightmare is like spoilers and things. But I need to know what happened to Selena. I do know that Dorian killed the king because he mentions it in a line in this. But I thought Selena was the one who was gonna kill him because of what he did to like her and her family in the past. Because I'm on the throne of Glass Wiki. She's not even on the first page of characters. Literally, what happened to Selena? She doesn't have a page. Is she one of the characters that we've already met? What? What? Oh, is she Aelin? All right, I'm clicking on Aelin's Wikipedia page. Hopefully I don't see. Formerly known as Selena. Oh my God, so she's been Selena the entire time. She, what? <laughs> Why has that never been mentioned? But I did have a little bit of an inkling because it was like that throwaway line about her previously being an assassin or something like that. But like, I genuinely thought like maybe Selena like died halfway through the series and was like replaced by Aelin or something. So she's the lost princess. Well, of course she is. Of course she is. So she's been here the entire time, just under a different name. Wow. See, I, st I don't think I would have known that even if I had have went to the very end of this book because there's just been no mention of her name previously being Selena. Like there's been no mention of Selena, the name, this entire book. So I was like, but it makes sense because she's the main character. But I thought maybe, maybe, maybe there might be a bit of a Game of Thrones kind of deal where it killed off a main character pretty early on. I was, you know, in my mind, I was theorizing, thinking, oh, maybe she got killed in Air of Fire because I've heard from a lot of people that that's like the turning point for the series. So I thought, oh, maybe she gets killed in there and Aelin is like introduced in like Crowd of Midnight or Air of Fire and she takes up the mantle. That's what I was assuming, but obviously bloody not. She's been here the entire time. Well, it makes sense, okay? <laughs> so did Selena not kill the king then? That was all she wanted to do in the first book. And Rowan is neither Dorian nor Kale, so I'm just going on Rowan's Wikipedia page now. What was his first book? When did he first appear? First appearance is the third book, Air of Fire. So he, and so he must become Aelin's lover. So forget the two love interests that were introduced in the first book. Forget about them because it's Rowan who is the love interest now. I probably should have looked that up straight away, to be honest, because I've been literally, I've read, how many pages is this? Like 600? I've read 608 pages thinking Selena's dead and Aelin's a new character. How, da how dare you confuse me? It's honestly rude that Sarah J Mass thinks that we should read all of the books before this in order to understand. Like, so I don't really have a whole lot to say. We are in the midst of battle. I think I would be upset if any of the characters I met in Throne of Glass died. So say like Aelin, slash Selena, Selena Gomez. I think if any of them died, I might be a bit upset. Also Irene, because I think she's carrying Kale's baby. So that would be traumatizing. That would be absolutely traumatizing if she died carrying Kale's baby. But I do think we're gonna be gearing up more into some like even more action. But yeah, that's probably all my thoughts right now. I'm gonna continue, I think, continue and hopefully finish it like ASAP. I feel so behind, honestly, and I can't believe it. It's like 350 odd pages left. I feel like I've been reading this for years. Was that, was that recent and fairer? Oh my God, my voice is going again. <laughs> it's because I'm not using it. I'm just not talking to anyone until I get this book done, this bloody book done. It's taking so long. It's take, why is it taking so long? Well, was that recent and favorite? They weren't named by name, but like just the setting of it. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna continue listening. 
I've given up on reading physically, to be honest. I just can't hold that book up anymore. I've given up. I'm confused. <laughs> but not in the way of, like, I don't know what went on. I kind of do. Like, I can follow a story. I can read, okay? Like, I, I can say what was happening on the page. I, but, like, I was expecting something different by the end of this. Like, why were so many people upset? like reading this book because nobody really died like I mean there were a couple of deaths but they seemed to be pretty minor compared to like the main characters how did everyone survive I was expecting it to be like a traumatic main character death by the end of it maybe kill you know my money my bets were on kill from to die that just didn't happen in fact it just felt very safe and I thought this is like a thousand page war book how does nobody die <laughs> I finished again I'm not gonna read it because that would be unfair I, I was genuinely expecting things to get a lot more exciting by the end it just felt like things were repeating if I told you the plot of this book it would literally just be people being scattered the main characters being scattered and going to battle having a bit of a war and that's it. There are some like character moments. Again, though, I didn't really care a whole lot for them because I don't know anyone. Yeah, I would have been so mad, actually. I would have been so mad if I'd read all of the other books to get to this book, quite honestly. I mean, that's just, just how I feel. Maybe I would have loved this more had I read the other books and felt more attached to the characters. But even then, I don't feel like the characters did a whole lot in terms of development. I genuinely, I don't know what to say. The ending with Aiden becoming queen and stuff, I mean, after reading this one first, it just seems like, I don't know, like, her character must have changed so much, which, you, of course, is sitting there, like, Gavin, of course, her character changes so much during the series. But I would have loved, like, just some semblance of the character we were first ever introduced to. This is kind of why I wanted to do the first and last book, because I just wanted to see if there was any kind of crossover between the first and the last book because I love it when we can get those nods to the first book I just genuinely don't feel like it was the same series which can sometimes be a good thing but you you would just hope at least that you would stay true to the original essence at least it just felt like a bloody war book <laughs> without a whole lot of plot this was a really weird experiment like was this worth it i don't know i mean at least i can see i finished the throne of glass series <laughs> i just missed out you know the five in the middle and you know what i'm looking it up now that was recent and fairer during that scene where aelin passes through and sees the the mountains and and stuff so yeah yeah it does say that that was fairer and and recent which is cool i like a crossover other than that this book exists would i recommend doing this i don't know i probably not do you think i should do another series where i read only the first book and the last book even looking at my shelves now i'm like what series could i do that for brandon sanderson maybe <laughs> but yeah leave some suggestions down in the comments if you think i should do it again you're probably like no gavin never do this again because it was stupid and i'd agree but like still let me know i genuinely have nothing else to say so thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it don't forget to leave this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already want to give a shout out to my patrons who also try to convince me not to do this and i just didn't listen to anyone more fool I. I have a link to my Patreon and my social media is down in the description box. So no obligations, of course, but you can uh, check me out on any of those. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. And hopefully, hopefully, my voice will be back to normal. Bye.